On this edition of Sports Weekly Roundup, we'll discuss the NBA season opener, talk MLB postseason, and of course, give our sports predictions. I'm Aaron Lee. And I'm Francesca Stewart, and this is Sports Weekly Roundup. The NBA season is underway, but before we jump into that, let's congratulate the women of the WNBA on a great 20th season. And more importantly, Naperville native Candace Parker and the Los Angeles Sparks on winning the WNBA title last week. Back to the NBA, reigning champs LeBron James and the Cleveland Cavaliers kicked off the season in great fashion, with their ring ceremony following a blowout win against the New York Knicks. While out west, Kevin Durant and the Golden State Warriors had a disappointing home opener, a shocking 29-point loss to the San Antonio Spurs. Meanwhile, here in Chicago, a new Bulls era begins, and Aaron says it all revolves around some newcomers. The Chicago Bulls have a new look this season. After acquiring Dwayne Wade and Rajon Rondo, it appears the team has more vets than World War II. It remains to be seen if a war will break out between the demanding vets and let's not forget about rising star Jimmy Butler. It'll be interesting to see how they develop their chemistry and manage their egos this season. From the United Center, I'm Aaron Lee. It's the best time of the year, October baseball, America's pastime. The World Series is underway. The Chicago Cubs versus the Cleveland Indians. Francesca has more on the hometown Cubs in their quest to win the World Series for the first time in 108 years. After a historic four-run ninth inning comeback against the San Francisco Giants in a clinching game four, the Chicago Cubs were back in the National League Conference Series for the second straight year. The Cubs would then go on to beat the Los Angeles Dodgers in six games after being down 2-1, to one, punching their ticket to the World Series for the first time since 1945. Going into this series, the Cubs are the heavy favorites to take it all, and the fans are excited and ready as they wait in line for that hot ticket. I mean, this is their year. We've been waiting. We deserve it. They're killing it all year, so they're taking it. It's been 108 years since the Cubs won a World Series, and so much has happened since then. Women gained the right to vote in the U.S. Penicillin was discovered. Mother Teresa was born, lived her whole life, and died. The Ottoman Empire fell. Humans set foot on the South Pole. The NBA, NHL, and NFL were all founded. We flew to the moon and invented astronaut ice cream. Alaska, Arizona, Hawaii, and New Mexico were added to the union. Recorded music became a thing. And lastly, Wrigley Field was built. I spoke with a Cubs fan and asked him if this is the year they bring it home. Well, I'm a true Cubs fan, so I'm never sure of Thing like that, but I am very hopeful that this is the year. The series is tied at one, and with game three shifting back here to Wrigley Field tonight, let's see if the Cubs can take a commanding two to one lead. For Good Day DePaul, I'm Francesca Stewart. It's week eight for the NFL, and here is our mid season report. There are no undefeated teams, and believe it or not, one of last year's Super Bowl teams, the Carolina Panthers, have only one win so far. The NFC East is the most competitive division, with rookie quarterback Dak Prescott leading Dallas ahead of the pack, and Tom Brady's Patriots have the best record in the league. Notable injuries this season, Houston Texans' J.J. Watt had a season-ending back injury. Pittsburgh Steelers' Ben Roethlisberger suffered a knee injury in Week 6 with no set timetable for his return. It's only Week 8, and anything can happen. So let's see how the second half of the season plays out. Sidney Crosby and the Pittsburgh Penguins recently visited the White House coming off winning the Stanley Cup last season. It appears they're poised to repeat another cup run with their hot start at 4-2-1. But the Penguins will have to contend with, yes, our Chicago Blackhawks. The Hawks enter the season with more questions than a final exam. With GM Stan Bowen juggling up the lineup as usual, this season will really test his ability to fill holes and manage the salary cap. The Hawks are returning their talented core, led by Jonathan Taze, Patrick Kane, Duncan Keith, Brent Seabrook, Marion Hulsa, Nicholas Charmerson, Corey Crawford, 
and the two brilliant newcomers from last year, Artemi Panarin and Artem Anisimov. Although the Hawks are off to a subpar 3-3-1 record, fans are still optimistic since they've won three Stanley Cups in the last six years and seem to win them in odd years. So this season gives them not only hope, but high expectations. Coming up next, we'll get to know two outstanding athletes in our Player Profile segment. And you don't want to miss our sports predictions. We'll be right back. Chicago is known for talented basketball players. It is home to Derrick Rose, Anthony Davis, and Jabari Parker, to name a few. All chose to leave the city and attend out-of-state colleges. But Curie High School star Devin Gage is looking to change that pattern. Aaron has more on the dynamic young guy now playing for the DePaul Blue Demons. Mark Aguirre, Terry Cummings, Skip Dillard, all DePaul greats. And the one thing they shared is they were all hometown guys who chose to stay in Chicago and attend DePaul. That decision propelled the Blue Demons to the number one team in the nation in the 1980s. Freshman Devin Gage wants to join that legendary group of Chicago players here at DePaul. Well, I chose DePaul because on, uh, on my uh, visit, it felt like home. And then they've been recruiting me since my sophomore year of high school. So. I fell in love with the coaching staff and the players. So why not stay home? I mean, you got all your fans here, you got all your family. You know, playing in a, a big time school like this, I mean, why not? Gage got serious about basketball in sixth grade and developed quickly. He attended Curie High School on the Southwest side, becoming one of the top point guards in the state and finishing his high school career as a class 4A state champ. Coming off a state championship, Devin Gage looks to bring that same winning mentality to the Blue Demons. With the combination of speed and quickness, he looks to be a big asset in assisting Billy Garrett Jr. in the backcourt this season. Coaches and players have raved about his fire and tenacity he's shown early in these practices. He's a tough guy, you know, good defender. Uh, he's been playing hard every single day, you know what I mean? So he's, he's heightened the competitiveness of practice. Um, and he's been playing extremely well, so I'm proud of him. He's still got some room to grow, as we all do, but uh, I'm, I'm happy with where he's at right now. Again, happy to have a guy from, from Chicago, you know, a hometown guy that really wanted to be here and to come to our program as a state champion means that he carries something a little bit different with him. Uh, but just like the other guys, trying to groom him and take it step by step so he doesn't get overwhelmed, start losing whatever confidence that, that one comes in here with. Gage's confidence is in wavering. His expectation this season? for the Blue Demons to make the NCAA tournament. He wants to contribute in any way he can, but one thing's for sure, he'll bring that high energy, aggressiveness, and toughness, a true Chicago style of basketball. For Good Day DePaul, I'm Aaron Lee. Let's shift to DePaul women's basketball, where returning starter and current top scorer, senior Jessica January is poised for another great season. Francesca Stewart has more. Senior Jessica January is entering her final season with DePaul's women's basketball team. Going into this season, she was named Big East Women's Basketball Preseason Player of the Year. She speaks on her expectations of the upcoming season. I definitely have high expectations for this team this year. I think last year we played really well. It was such a fun season, and we definitely want to try to do the same thing this year. Earlier this week, it was announced that January was named to the 2017 Nancy Lieberman Award watch list. Jessica January is a key player and team leader looking to lead the Lady Blue Demons further than the Sweet 16 this year. This is even more of a defining season as she has hopes of being drafted into the WNBA this upcoming spring. Last season, January continued to elevate her game as she averaged 14 points, 5 rebounds and 6 assists, all career highs. DePaul women's basketball coach Doug Bruno speaks on her being the team captain. Just knows that, that you know, that she's going to have to play a major role in leading this basketball team. And she's looked up so far as really looked like that's she gets she gets that. It's no secret that January is a huge Beyonce fan and listens to her hit single Formation before the games. Let's see if January and the Lady Blue Demons can get information and have another winning season. For Good Day DePaul, I'm Francesca Stewart. Let's talk some NBA. All right, the Cleveland Cavaliers, they got their rings there the night at opening day. Uh, LeBron James had a triple-double. All is well in Cleveland right now. 
What do you think they're going to do this season? What do you think about your Cavs? Well, I think that they're going to pick up where they left off at. They're going to, they're going to continue to win. You know, they want to make sure that LeBron and Kyrie continues to be the great dynamic duo, duo that they are. So I think this is going to, going to be definitely a good season for my Cavs. Um, I think the season opener against the Knicks, it wasn't really much of a test for them. I mean, the Knicks are a washed-up veteran team. Even though it's only the beginning of the season, they have 81 more games to play. I just... They're not our competition, so. All hell, LeBron. All <laughs> hell, LeBron. I think they played well um, at opening night. Like you said, it was against the Knicks that are still trying to hash out this triangle offense. They're just getting Derrick Rose back um, fully. So it's going to be interesting to see how the Cavaliers um, put it all together. And also, can they repeat again? You know, they have to go against this team out west. Well, before we get there, you heard what LeBron said. It's Cleveland against the world. That's how I look at it. All right, can the world beat these monsters out in the West, in the Bay Area? Let's talk about the Warriors. Um, they had a disappointing opening day uh, with a blowout loss to the San Antonio Spurs. Greg Popovich had those guys playing great team ball. It seemed like the chemistry wasn't really well with Kevin Durant yet. What do you think about these Warriors? I think with due time and more games played together as they're more so a new team, not necessarily new, they just added Kevin Durant and got rid of a couple of old pieces, I think they'll be good. But as you said, the season opener was horrific. Like, how can they lose 29 points? By 29 points, that's awful. It wasn't good. Yeah, Kevin Durant even said afterwards, like, it was a slap in the face. And that's literally what it was. Like, it was like, that's not what we expected from them. You know, they're dubbed this super team, and they got – Ran out of the gym by the San Antonio, San Antonio Spurs, who aren't anybody light. They're a good team out west, too, but we wasn't expecting that from them. But I think, you know, in due time, further into the season, they'll get it together. What do you think? Well, I think that the Warriors have uh, an issue with the players they lost. Uh, I don't think their bench is as strong as it, as it was in the past. So I think that they're going to have to develop new guys. Also, it's going to be um, kind of funny, you know, to see Clay, Steph, and you have Kevin, Kevin Durant in there all at the same time. Who's going to shoot the ball? There's only one ball out there. So they can't forget about Draymond because Draymond is that X factor. So I think that also played a key into them losing the other night. And once they get him back in that offense, I think we'll see them flow a little they bit better. They better not forget about Draymond. You saw his mom send out that tweet on Twitter. She's not having it. Yeah, she, she, is, but... not, she is not having it. Now let's talk... Hometown Bulls, my team, the only team. You saw what Dwayne Wade did. And he did a good job. He had flashes of the old D-Way. We call him Flash. But how long will it last? That is the question. That is I give the it question. two games. He's done. His knees are old. It's a veteran Look, team. They're all. I don't see them making the post. He's married to Gabrielle season. Union. A That's great the only actress. thing that he's winning at right now. You know, I don't got Look, the team being good. I'm sorry. I think the Bulls will uh, make the playoffs. I think they. Wait, have which, a, seed, which seed? You better not that say eight. remains to be seen, but they will make the playoffs. I think uh, they're going to develop their chemistry. Jimmy Butler looked good. Um, he shot well behind the arc. Um, also, I was um, very surprised that our big man, I was happy with uh, Robin Lopez. He seemed to be active on the glass, picked up a few points as well. So um, I, I'm really curious to see if the Bulls can make a, a run and be a contender this season. Yeah, I think the main factor for that is how long can Dwayne Wade stay healthy. You know, it's the beginning of the season. I'm sure his legs are somewhat fresh now, but by the time All-Star break gets around, is he going to be out there? Will he be ready and not in pain or able to fully perform? So We'll, we'll see. see. Go Bulls. I'm ready. Go Phillies. <laughs> I'm a Let's Sixers go. fan. Let's go. Let's go. Now. Let's go. Okay, um, so... Finals predictions. Who do you have? I'm going to go out on a limb. I'm going to be crazy here. I'm going to say it's going to be the San Antonio Spurs versus the New York Knicks. Stop it. The New no way. York Knicks. Wow, they're a washed up team. Derrick Rose is not the same Derrick Rose. He played really well. I mean, they were they played really well against Cleveland, but he's not the same. Melo hasn't been the same. He's choosing Olympic medals over rings. How are the fans even supposed Look, to take that? They're I not making it to the finals. They will get it together. I think they'll get it together. They'll be that surprise team. So answer this question. What are they going to do with my Cavaliers? The same thing. That Who they do they have? Derrick Rose or Kyrie? Who, he can't check Kyrie. Come on. We'll see. What is your prediction? What, my what prediction, what um, okay, of course, without a doubt, in my mind, the Cleveland Cavaliers will come out of the Eastern Conference. Of course, it's LeBron's conference. It's not even the Eastern Conference anymore. It's LeBron's conference. And I'm going to say that out West, I'm sorry, I'm not really sold on the Warriors yet. 
So I'm going to have to go with San Antonio. San Antonio, like they're the looking like the best team out there, and I think they can really give my team a run for their money. But I got LeBron coming out on top when it's all said and done. At least we agree with the San Antonio <laughs> Spurs. You sure? Yeah, we agree on that. We, I don't all agree right, with let, those Knicks. Okay. Let's move on. Let's move on. Okay, so we're moving on. So let's let's get to the NFL. So Jay Cutler returns Monday night as they host the Minnesota Vikings. So do you think that? Um, Jay Cutler is going to turn around that 1-6 record for the Bears because that's awful, but it hasn't really been good lately anyway. Or do you think he's auditioning for a new team? What, do you, what is your take? As a depressed Bears fan, it doesn't matter what Jay Cutler does at this point. Um, he's basically auditioning for the next team. Um, right now we're in a rebuilding stage. I think John Fox has seen enough. I think they'll draft a quarterback this year or uh, next in next year's draft. So um, whatever he does... Um, it's great. Maybe he can, you know, find a backup role at some other some other team. But it really doesn't matter what he's doing. He's just the next man up. Brian Hoyer broke his arm last game, so you got to put him out there because you're paying him. So right now, Jay is just being Jay and doing what he's doing. Let's just hope that he doesn't go out there and get brutally or in, brutally attacked or injured when they go play the very well stifling defense of the you know Minnesota Vikings. They're really good. It could happen because we all know Jay is a little little soft out there. <laughs> <laughs> okay, so you're our college football expert. So the top ranked the top ranked teams right right now are Alabama, Michigan, Clemson, and Washington. Do you see a one loss team jumping an undefeated team? My pick would be Louisville. Um, I think they're a good team, and they beat Clemson. So I, I mean, I'm sorry they lost to Clemson, but it goes to show that um, you know they have some potential to jump. Do you think any Do you think any other team besides them will jump? I agree with you with Louisville. Um, the fact that they lost to Clemson, it was a good game. Um, I see them jumping, maybe Washington for that fourth spot. But another team is Ohio State. Okay. Urban Meyer is a great coach. I don't know. They just had a relapse of a, of a terrible game. Um, they're six and one right now, but I see them jumping, maybe uh, Louisville or maybe Washington for getting in there. It could be two big teams in there again. So okay. I really see Ohio State or Louisville jumping to that fourth spot, you know, in this year's college football playoff. Okay, so let's bring it back to Chicago. All right. Tonight is game three. It's a big game. They're bringing it back to big game. Uh, the Windy City. So this is the first play, first World Series game since 1945. This is big for Chicago. Who takes game three tonight? Oh, that's easy. Chicago Cubs. I mean, we're going to take game it. three, four, four and five. five. And we're going to win Sunday, it all. Sunday, it's, it's going to be over. It's going to be it. We're all going to take off work next week <laughs> for the parade. So I see the Cubs. Well, we'll be working. We'll be out there. Yeah, we'll be out there, but I see I see them closing it out and not taking this back to Cleveland. Um, I just see them those backs getting hot here and just the atmosphere. Today yeah. it's been a great day and fans have been out there all day, so I see them knocking it out these next th uh, next three games. Yeah, we need this. The city needs this. It's been way too long, so I think I think they really make it happen. We this we year. aren't you from Philly? <laughs> well, aren't you from Philly? Okay, oh, so now you're a Cubs <laughs> fan. You're a bandwagon fan. Shout out to the Phillies too. I mean, they've been horrible too, but I'm here in Chicago now, so I'm with the Cubs. We all in on the Cubs. We're all, in. all in on all the Cubs. In. <laughs> <laughs> well, that's all the time we have today. Join us next time for all sports and everything sports. I'm Francesca Stewart, and I'm Aaron Lee. See you next time.